This is the Zero Plus Logic Cube Pro, more specifically the model LAPC Pro 32256M, and this is the most expensive device in my shop. Now, I titled this as an honest review because I want to get right off the bat and say Zero Plus sent me this device for free. Now, they were kind enough to tell me that I could do whatever I wanted with it. They were kind enough to not put me on any kind of timelines. They didn't tell me that I had to have any kind of talking points or anything like that. But let's be honest, when a company sends you a $3,500 device, you would like to be kind to it. But my goal today is not to be kind. My goal is to give you guys an honest impression of not only this device, but of the logic analyzer landscape. Let's be honest, Zero Plus wants to sell as many logic analyzers as they can. That's their goal. But my goal is to help you get into hardware hacking. And so our goals sometimes may align, they may not align, but I'm going to talk about this device and the entire landscape of the logic analyzer market, and we're going to see where we all end up. I've already done a full unboxing of this as well as their awesome protocol simulator boards. Uh, but just to give you a quick recap, the device comes with a nice case. You have the device itself. You have a bunch of probes, even more probes than are pictured in here. These little wires, they're DuPont cables that connect to the end of the uh, logic analyzer. There are some extra little clips here, bunches of extras, little clips. There is the Logic Pro Lapsy software and a USB 3 cable. We're going to get more into comparing what the device has, but just off the top, I want to tell you that this is the device I have. It has 8 gigs of total memory, can sample 8 channels at 2 gigahertz or 32 channels at 500 megahertz. Uh, you can use external timing to sample at 250 megahertz, uh, can do negative 6 to positive 6 volts, and works on Windows. So before we get too far along, the question is, what does this device do and why would somebody want one? Well, the idea of this device is similar to an oscilloscope, but designed around digital signals. And the idea is that you can drop these probes sort of in the middle of a circuit and read what's going on on the data lines. This device is designed to decode 129 different protocols. I've gone over some of them with DMX and some of the other things that it can do. But this device is designed to look at the signals that are going down the path, sort of dip in the middle, grab them out, decode them, and let you see what's going on. Let me give you an example. By far, the simplest way to demonstrate what the logic analyzer does is to take your basic Arduino and upload a sketch that will say, have it output the words, hello YouTube, every two seconds. So if you would picture, we have a little pin here that is a serial out. And you can picture that this would be going out to some sort of display or some sort of other device. But essentially, we would have a wire coming out of here going into something else. Now, what can happen is the logic analyzer can grab onto this clip, or in this side, in this situation, we'll just grab onto this side, and can view the data that is coming out of this serial port on the fly. So we're going to take it, and channel A0 would be the brown one, so we're going to take that and we're going to add the clip right here, and then we'll hook it all up. Okay, so I'm in the software and I'm going to hit the plus button and that will bring up a new 32 channel view, but I only care about the first channel. So we're going to hit add channel and we're going to tell it channel A0. Hit next, we're going to tell it to delete everything else. Now, this logic analyzer can capture data a ton of different ways. It can just sit there and look at whatever happens to flow past it or it can wait for some sort of event to cause it to start triggering. So in our case, because this sketch has the output coming every two seconds, we want to make sure that we don't capture during a time that nothing is happening, and we want to make sure that we don't capture in the middle of the packet. We want to capture the entire thing from beginning to end. So in that situation, what we'll do is we'll click on this trigger button, and we want to start capturing on the rising edge. So just as this thing begins to put out data, we want to capture that. So I'm going to hit the play button, which will do a single capture. 
and you can see that we have a little bit of an intro in here and then all of a sudden we go high with some data so i'm going to zoom out so you can see that entire data stream at once and you can see we've got lots of squiggly lines of things going up and down and that is our serial data now you could if you were very good you could come in here and look at the timing and, and count the binary and all that kind of stuff or you could come in here and add a protocol decoder and in this situation it is uart so we're going to hit next and we're going to tell it that we were at 9600 baud and on channel a0 and we're going to leave that alone so now you can see that we have our hexadecimal information coming out which if you read hex that's not a problem but what you may want to do is to right click this again and change the numeric and base encoding to ascii and now you'll see that we have h e l l o and then we have a space and then we have youtube and so we were able to not only capture this information but we were able to decode it into something that we can read so it's one thing to decode serial data, but it's a completely different thing to do some of the more advanced things that this device can do. This device is used in real manufacturing labs to test memory, to test compact flashcards, to test all kinds of different things to check for data integrity. Um, but as makers, we can use it for a lot of other things. One of the things this thing decodes is USB, and I've been kind of tinkering around with this little cable I made where I put a USB connector on the end and this goes in the computer and then you can plug devices into this. And so I left these tabs kind of long here on the top so I can grab onto them with the probe and you can take things such as old USB one thumb drives, keyboards and things like that and you can connect the logic analyzer here and actually spy what's going on between here and your computer. Now I do have a trigger warning for you coming up next. If you are squeamish about seeing electronics being injured, then you might want to cover your eyes for a minute. This is the inside of the FUBOT air quality monitor. And I have long suspected that this thing might be sending out a little bit more information than is obvious. And so looking at the board, <laughs> looking at the board, just let me break this down for you. This is where all of the sensor magic happens. But this second board up here is a Wi-Fi board. And the deal is this thing communicates with this board up here and is able to, and this is what encrypts the information and sends it out over the internet. Now, the problem is that as soon as it hits this board, the data is encrypted so basically any kind of spying i do on my network i'm not able to see exactly what this thing is putting out because it's encrypted and so what the logic analyzer allowed me to do and i'm not going to get into all my results in this video but i was able to solder even onto the chip itself these dupont wires and that allowed me to read what signals were coming between the fubot board and the Wi-Fi board and grab a hold of them before they got encrypted by this board. And that is the power of a device like this, is to, to basically act as a digital tap, as a digital spy, where you can take a look at this stuff in line before it ever leaves the board and understand what's going on. So the question remains, why would Zero Plus send a $3,500 device to a small YouTube channel where the YouTuber is known for being pretty cheap. Are they crazy or are they crazy like a fox? I don't know. You guys can answer that question. But what I can tell you is the way I look at it, I look at it similar to the car market. So if you think about it, uh, BMW has some cars down in the 2 Series, which are their cheaper models. And then the goal is to get 20 and 30 year olds into the 2 Series. We're hoping, you know, as they get a little more disposable income when they're in their 40s and 50s, that they will move up to the 7 Series and the 8 Series and maybe even buy an i8, buy a fancy one. And that is where I think Zero Plus did something that was very, very smart, not in sending me the device, but in this, in the software. So whether you buy their 
cheapest device on the market or the most expensive one, they basically use the same software and have the same decoding capabilities. Now, they may not have as much memory or as many channels to do it for as long or to do as many things simultaneously, but they perform the same basic tasks. And so the idea that Zero Plus has, and I think it's a brilliant one, is that you buy as much logic analyzer as you can afford. Now, the hardware is only part of the story. The software is really where a lot of the magic happens. And so the idea is that if you buy an entry model $200 Zero Plus logic analyzer, you can learn the software, you can learn the capabilities, and then as your needs grow, you can step up and you can get more memory, you can get more channels, you can buy exactly the logic analyzer you need without having to have a new learning curve of how to use the software. So I don't feel like it would be fair of me to pretend that other devices don't exist. If you're in the market for a logic analyzer, you want to know what you should buy. And if you watch this channel, the one that probably pops into your mind is this bad boy. And this is often referred to as a Sailey, although it is not designed by that company. And we'll talk about that. But this is available for somewhere between six and fifteen dollars online, depending on where you get it. This is an eight channel logic analyzer and it is, um, it's good. And in fact, I'll go ahead and say unequivocally, everybody should buy one of these things. They're great to have around. It's great to learn on. It's cheap. There's almost no reason not to have one of these in your tool chest. Uh, but it is not this. Uh, let's start off with the fact that this one uh, can sample up to a gigahertz and this one is 24 megahertz. And when you are doing sampling, you want to be able to record at a speed that is four times the signal that you are trying to read. And so uh, that would theoretically make this practical for recording signals up to four megahertz. And that's just not enough. There's nowhere near enough memory and the software. So let's talk about the software. If you watch YouTube videos, you will see people telling you to go download the Sailey software. And almost without fail, there will be somebody in the comments saying, hey, that's stealing. And uh, so what happened was, the issue was that when these things came out, they used a similar chipset to another brand's logic analyzer. And people were stealing the software from that logic analyzer and using it to run on here. So I actually reached out to Saley and I was like, look, I, I, I hear people talk about this being stealing or not, you know, and, and when it came down to it, they're like, Hey, we're a small company. We're real people. In fact, I talked to this guy right here and he's like, yeah, it's been a massive problem for our company. We put all this R and D time into developing this software that we were giving away for our actual product. And then people started using it on this product. So we were basically making nothing off of that. And they eventually patched it so that it won't work with this. Um, so you might be able to find some old versions laying around, but these people are not super happy about that. And so that does leave you a couple of open source software options. And I tried them. And to be honest, I just didn't like them. Um, Again, I was spoiled. You're coming from this to going to the open source versions of these programs, and they're just not the same. The reality for the maker community is that this is probably too much logic analyzer for you at $3,500. And this is probably not enough logic analyzer for you at $13. And so how can we meet in the middle and get some quality software, some quality hardware, and save some cash. So there are two devices that I would look at in the Lap C line uh, by Zero Plus. And there's the Lap C 16032 and the 16064. Now the 16064 I think is the best bang for your buck logic analyzer because it is currently selling in the US for $230. And for that, you get a 16 channel version and it has 100 megahertz sampling capability and 64K per channel, one meg total. And uh, so that is going to give you 
all of the great software, all of the 129 protocol decoders, the ability to capture and do all the different things that you can do with this device just on a smaller scale. Now, what if you want to get away from Zero Plus? Well, the company that got ripped off with this software has their own version of this. The reason why you could rip off their software is because they sell a model called the Logic 8, which is $399, so almost twice the price of the Lap C that I recommended. And for that, you get the same specs as this. You get 25 megahertz, well, you get a little bit better. You get 25 megahertz and uh, eight channels for $399, but you do get to legitimately use the Saley software, which in my opinion is good software, but not as good as this. For that $399, you get the ability to decode 25 protocols as opposed to the 129 that this one can do. So essentially, the Zero Plus logic analyzers kind of stand on their own. I asked Saley to provide a device to do battle, and they wanted no part of that. They know that the Zero Plus one would clean their megahertz clock in every way, shape, and form. So... Again, if you are looking for a logic analyzer, the coolest thing is, is that you can get in on the LAPC 16064 and over time you can trade up and get something a little bit more if you need that. But the reality is, as makers, you'll probably never need anything more than what that device would provide. So that is my opinion of Zero Plus. That is my opinion of the logic analyzer market. And I'd love to know what you think. Hey, have a great day. Thanks for watching.